Okay, so today's uh, video is uh, in response or by request of Swamp Gump Harpy, who um, commenting on another video of mine asked uh, or said, I have an old Lucky Strike Continental Push Lighter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Could you do a video on flint replacement? I think I can figure it out, but rather see a guy. Also, the striker wheel is direction. Okay, so he's basically, he's asking about the flint replacement, um, which, you know, what we have here, this is missing the uh, fill screw. But this is a Continental. Um, now, this one is not Lucky Strike. Could have been. Uh, there's no telling. The advertisement has come off of it. But the um, this is the lighter he's speaking of. Uh, only, like I said, it's missing a fill screw. The uh, question was about flint replacement. Um, just normal... Normal everyday lighter maintenance replacing a flint would be as simple as removing the flint spring screw I'm going to hold on to that because it'll fly out of there um, removing the flint spring screw, dropping a new flint in, and then putting it back would be replacing a flint in a, you know, a lighter that you know the, the flint tube is not obstructed and all that. <clears throat> but on a lighter that uh, you just purchased on eBay that um, any, of, any of my lighters, that one had a flint in it, if you were to purchase a lighter on eBay, uh, any of any of my lighters that you purchase, they are going to be, if they're not working, it's gonna be clearly marked that that lighter is not working. Um, most of the lighters that I sell, um, that's, that's the whole purpose, is working vintage lighters. You, all you gotta do is put fuel in it and it's gonna fire up for you. What I was getting at is a lot of other eBay sellers um, may not be quite so honest. You may purchase a lighter that, you know, says nothing about its condition, or it may say it's in good working condition. By the time you get it home, get it unpackaged, and, uh, you know, try to put a flint in it, and you realize it's got some, the, the old flint is degraded and, and obstructing the tube. So, um, first, just replacing the flint, easy as that. But if you've got a degraded flint in the flint tube, turned to concrete, dust, whatever, it's uh, packed in there, well then, I've made the other video where I jam a rod in there with a drill. If you're not very handy, if you're not very mechanical minded, then, uh, you know, maybe that, that, or if you just don't have time or don't want to mess with it, maybe you got, maybe your eyes are bad. And you don't want to, you don't even like looking at these little screws. I don't know. That's a, that's an option. But this option, as far as clearing a flint tube, is going to be much more um, reliable. This is going to clear the flint tube and um, not going to be near the headache as far as, you know, butting your head against the wall. Uh, there's just going to be maybe some, um, you know, you just got to be careful, just like anything else. My dad, I very seldom saw him do it. I don't know if I ever saw him do it. But, you know, he, he preached, you know, if you can take it apart, then you ought to be able to put it back together. You just got to remember how you took it apart. And if you have to, you can label it. I've never, I never saw him do that. And with lighters, most of the time, there's no need for that. You have, you're going to take the screw out. Um... You know, generally it's going to be, the the gear is going to be on, I say the left side. It's the right if you're looking at it. It's the left, I guess, from the perspective of the lighter. 
So yeah, if you're looking into it like that, the gear is generally gonna be here. So as long as you, you know, understand a few basics uh, and remember, don't lose track of what you're taking apart here, then, you know, just as it's, I took the flint out of it, but just as it was sparking while ago, then it should spark when we put it back together. That didn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'm taking this apart to show you how to clear an obstruction that's not there, um, just to clarify. Okay, so just like on the Ronson, <clears throat> where you have the uh, gear on this side, like I said, the left side of the light or the right side if you're looking into it, looking into the mouth of it. Um, only with this particular type of lighter, you've got the gears built into the mechanism there. Then, beneath here, you're going to have your clutch spring and your file wheel with, as I said, the gears connected. So, once again, the lighter was working. We take this out, we disassemble it. As long as we don't change anything. Now, I guess that's possible that if, uh, it's always possible that you get yourself into a lighter that you bought on eBay, that it's not working. You take it apart, somebody else has already been in there and put it back together the wrong way. That's a possibility. Um, now with this particular lighter, we knew that it was working right because I, like I said, I'm trying to show you how to clear an obstruction that's not actually there. Um, which to get to that part of it, um, you can see here. And the way that where all my drill bits are. Um, you know, you can, I don't remember, 332nd is one of them, 564s. But I would always try to spin them by hand first. Usually you can get it just by working them by hand. Um, if you jab it through there, you could damage the lighter beyond repair. But, that's basically it as far as clearing the obstruction. You're just going to be careful. There's really not a science to it or anything. It's, um, you know, it's just chipping away at it. And, you know, a lot of times when you first get in there, if it is obstructed, it's just going to look like concrete and it's going to feel harder. So, um, as I said, just be careful. Uh, when I get a chance, I, I'll make a video. I'll try. Uh, next time I have to clear one. Um, but as I said, this particular video, uh, I felt like what he was asking was more about getting the mechanism back together. Um, and this was the only example of this particular lighter that I had. So um, the fact that the tube was already clear just uh, bad luck unfortunate anyway okay so to get back here so then once you have 
once you've got your tube clear, you know, if you've got canned air, you might use some canned air to spray it out. If you've got air compressor, that comes in handy. Um, but, you know, I'm always, I'm usually going to drop a flint down it. And then you can always run your flint spring back down it and just make sure. So, anyway, we know it's good. So now we're going to put the mechanism back together just as it came apart. The flat part going up. Into... That's where the Ronsons have the flat piece that fits out that goes forward that holds it in place. Um, anyway. This is not my favorite part of this. I don't really like working with these small screws and everything. Um, I really would rather deal with other mechanisms and clear other obstructions. Okay, so see, I've let that flint wheel get cockeyed somehow. Or maybe not. Maybe I just can't see shit. No, it looks like we're good. So let's try this again. You gotta line those teeth up in the hole. Okay, so you line the teeth up with the hole, then that should, I mean, I'm sorry, line the teeth up and the hole. Should get those two synchronized, and we should be good. Then you get the other, get the screw back on the other side. going on here there we go it's like I just get lucky because uh, I don't know that I can see any of this stuff well I have to actually get that on there anyway so we've got it tightened back up there. The mechanism functioning again. You gotta line those teeth up in the hole. Okay. So you line the teeth up with the hole, then that should, I mean, I'm sorry, line the teeth up and the hole. You get those two synchronized and it should be good. Then you get the other, get the screw back on the other side.
What's going on here? It's like I just get lucky because uh, I don't know that I can see any of this stuff well enough to actually get that on there. Anyway, so we've got it tightened back up there. The mechanism functioning again. Now let's get our uh, flint. Flint spring screw, which this one doesn't, it's going to be difficult, so I may have to take it out of the view of the camera, I don't know, maybe not. So there you go, uh, flint replacement or clearing the flint tube of a continental flat ad lighter. And uh, you can apply those same um, fundamentals, those same basic principles uh, to a plethora of other lighters. Please uh, like us on social media, all of the, uh, across all the social media platforms, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, uh, eBay, uh, maybe leaving something out. It'll either be Dependable Flame or DependableFlame.com. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video that you're watching and uh, please tell your friends, send the link. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, about to start some penny start auctions on vintage lighters so you definitely don't want to miss that if you like old lighters